Okay, so I'm entering the room and I'm introducing myself. That is a student nurse. And I'm going to first of all wash my hands and then I'm going to ask the patient to identify themselves. And the patient has a wristband on, so I'm gonna go ahead and ask them for their full name and date of birth. And then I'm also gonna ask the patient if they have any allergies. I'm gonna compare that to my EMR. So the patient verifies that they are who they are, and I know that this is the patient that I need to um, draw blood on. Before I draw the blood though, I check the provider's orders to make sure that the appropriate blood is being drawn for the patient's condition. And I also um, look to see what types of laboratory values that the provider is looking for. So I verify all that, I verify the patient's uh, medical history. And as I'm in the room, <clears throat> excuse me, I ask the patient if they have had any trouble with prior blood draws, such as fainting or nausea, or just feeling lightheaded. And in that case, make sure that your patient is positioned in a comfortable position, and either they're sitting or lying if they've had any of that history. So then I can go ahead and begin to perform my procedure. The patient understands what I'm doing after I explain it. I'm just gonna wash my hands again and apply gloves. Also, you can uh, adjust the bed to a working height. And then apply any other PPE that might be necessary if you suspect that you might get splash or anything. Um, you can put other PPP on. Okay, so then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna assess my patient's site that I'm gonna draw the blood from. And first of all, uh, the anticubital, the anticubital vein over in this area is typically one of the um, most utilized sites because it's easy to see and it's easy to access for just plain being a puncture with blood draw. So I'm just checking the vein. The vein feels soft and feels kind of bouncy. I don't feel any um, bumps or obstructions, and the patient doesn't have a history of obstruction or blood flow. They also don't have a history of lymphedema in that arm. There are no IVs running, um, no history of a stroke, which would you would want to use the other extremity if that was the case. And this, in this case, it is not. So I'm gonna grab my tourniquet here. I'm gonna place that about two inches above where I'm going to draw the blood. And then I'm gonna use an alcohol wipe to cleanse the area disinfect it and I'm going to let that dry. At the same time I'm going to go ahead and remove my supplies that I'm going to need. My vacutainer and then I'm also going to need my um, access device. Always check the expiration date on your supplies to make sure that they're not expired before you are going into the patient's room. And then I also have my blood tubes that I'm gonna utilize for putting my blood draw in. How are you doing? Doing okay? So make sure you ask the patient if they're doing okay. I'm checking the radial pulse to make sure that the patient still has a perfusion below the tourniquet. This patient does. If they do not, remove the tourniquet and try again. Then you're gonna go ahead and stabilize your vein using your opposite or non-dominant hand with your thumb and then you're gonna go into the vein. Uh, make sure that you make the patient aware that you're gonna feel a stick or a little poke and go at a 30 degree angle. Once you get blood, just go a little bit more and then I'm gonna go ahead and secure that. So I'm going to attach my vacutainer and then take my blood tube that I need blood and then I can start filling my blood tubes. And because this is a mannequin it may not fill like it should. So once you get the your tubes to the correct amount just invert, set aside, and then you can put your other one on. 
and that will fill up your blood tube. And then remove that, invert. All right, so once I'm done drawing the blood, I'm going to go ahead and remove my gauze Place the gauze over the insertion site, pull out your needle, and you're gonna go ahead and discard that in the sharps container, and you're gonna hold pressure. And once you hold pressure for a minute or so, then you're gonna go ahead and secure the gauze onto the patient. Okay, and ask the patient how they are doing and then you are done. And then go ahead and remove gloves. Wash your hands. And then you're going to label the blood tubes in front of the patient and transport to the, to the lab as soon as possible per policy and procedure of your facility. Also, don't forget to document um, what you did and how the patient reacted.